but you'll, you'll see Mary Kay there, but just imagine a woman jumping up and down uh, because she's an amazing woman and her story I felt tonight was a perfect story as we talk about becoming um, uh, advocates and promoting the campaign that we're really um, hoping becomes a statewide uh, effort here in Wisconsin and is amplified with all of our voices. So Pam, our second speaker, will be sharing that information and some of the really exciting plans that are going to happen in Wisconsin through the organization Donate Life Wisconsin and the National Kidney Foundation is part of that. So I'm going to turn it over first uh, to Mary Kay. Um, and I don't want to steal any of your thunder, Mary Kay, but I just want to thank you for volunteering your time tonight um, because you're really an inspiration to many. Um, Thank you. Thank you for that lovely introduction and uh, good evening to everybody here in the room and to our online guest. Um, I am Mary Kay and I am a living kidney donor and I am thrilled to be here to tell my story. Um, this is actually the first time I have publicly shared. Um, I have probably told thousands of people my story um, and have always sought a way to really expand that audience and, and to really just kind of capture the essence of, of how I got here. And um, that story doesn't just begin with the donation process. It actually began many, many years ago. Um, actually, back when I was a senior in high school, um, I suffered from um, a severe asthma attack and pneumonia. And back in that day, you know, um, all of the medical jargon and the things that are so focused upon now, length of stay and, and getting people through the system, you know, none of that mattered. And um, I went to St. Joseph's Hospital here in Milwaukee, and I was put on a cardiac ward. And I am certain I was the only patient born in the 20th century. Um, I was 17 years old, and I spent um, a week in the hospital with uh, patients in their 80s and 90s and, you know, learning how to play all those card games that I watched my grandparents play, you know, Sheep Set and Canasta. And, um, I was registered for college. I was not intending to be a nurse. I was going to go into psychology and marketing. And something very profound happened to me during that stay. And that was Mary Botticelli. Mary Botticelli was the nurse who cared for me. And in that time, I decided to make a huge life change. I said, you know what? I am not going to go to UWM for psychology and marketing. I'm going to be a nurse. Because if I get to make people feel every day like Mary Botticelli made me feel, that's how I want to, that's how I want to spend my life. So my passion is caring for others and giving of myself. And I've been a nurse and had a blessed career for the past 22 years. And that didn't happen by accident. You know, that, that was a role of faith, of God's plan, of my journey to eventually getting to this, this place of being able to, to just share the joy of my, of my donation story. So, you know, um, life went on and, and I moved out to McGuanago. Not a whole lot going on in McGuanago. Um, but I had these fabulous neighbors, the bussies, who say, hey, you know, do you have a church home? No, no, we don't. Come to church with us. So my husband, Rick, and I, my two young daughters at the time, we um, started attending River Glen Christian Church in uh, Waukesha. And my husband is an extremely talented musician. I'm kind of the talentless one. I play, I play the flute. Um, so I was kind of the roadie, you know, for, for all of his years as a musician. And he got involved in the church ministry, the arts ministry, playing bass and saxophone and many other things. And through that relationship, um, he bonded with a drummer named Mike. And the years passed, and we forged that relationship with Mike and, and then his new wife, Angela, back in 2011. They got married uh, September 11th, 2011, and came home from their honeymoon, and Mike needed to be put on dialysis. Um, Mike had suffered from a progressive kidney disease called IgA neuropathy. And, you know, being a nurse, I, I, I understood the disease process and, you know, watched this young man, just, you know, brand new wife, you know, the, the world in front of him, just struggling. And tongue-in-cheek, in front of a plate full of donuts one day at church, I said, hey, yeah, if you ever need a kidney, let me know. 
Um, not really thinking, yeah, well, this guy's never going to take me up on it, you know. Uh, I, I'm a nurse. That's what you do. You just, you, you, you help others. Um, well, a couple of months had passed and Mike had been receiving dialysis pretty frequently, three days a week, you know, spent his Saturdays in a chair. And for some of you in this room, you know that pain and that struggle and, and perhaps some of you who are who are listening in. And it's it's debilitating to see somebody you love and somebody you care about struggle, it's especially a 39-year-old man. I mean, whole life ahead of him. He was told they were never going to have children. They were never, you know, his, his outlook was grim unless he could receive a kidney. So they decided to take me up on my offer. And it wasn't just me. There were four other people from our church community who stepped up and offered to get tested um, to be a, a donor to Mike. And that, that's, that's pretty outstanding. I mean, I, I think even me who knows what the process is as a caregiver really didn't think about it too terribly deeply. It was just like, okay, this, this guy needs a kidney and uh, hey, I'll step up. And then it became real, real. You know, MK, can you get tested? Yeah, sure. You know, I've peed in cups. I've gotten stuck with needles. I do that all the time to people. What's the, what's the harm in getting tested? There's no way I'm ever going to be a match. You know, how is that? You know, it's kind of a one in a million chance, right? Well, several of us uh, decided to engage in that process, and it turns out that I was an ideal match for Mike. This, this perfect stranger to me just years prior who was the drummer in our church band. You know, obviously I'd befriended him, but, you know, the relationship was just, it was kind of loose, you know, it's not like we hung out all the time. Um, and then that day I had this just kind of awakening, like, wow. This is real. Okay. Those of you who have experienced this know that the transplant process is, is very lengthy. I mean, it, it takes a good, you know, six months to really work through that testing and that process. And with each step, I was nervous. I had two young daughters, and my mind is, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if my daughter needs a kidney? What if my husband, my mom, you know, any, anybody else, you know, am I, am I really ready for this? Um, but the beautiful thing is that it, it just kind of clicked that this is my purpose. You know, this, and I get, I'm sorry, I get teary when I tell this story because that's why I'm here. And um, wow, what a beautiful gift. So November 6th, 2012. Was it 2012? I don't even remember. Yeah, that was five years ago, right? It was election day. And I'm, uh, I'm pretty staunchly political. So <laughs> after we get through this whole process and they say, hey, you know, you're the, you're the, you're going to be the donor. You know, that, that relief was so great because I wanted it so bad, yet the terror really set in. And uh, it was real. And so go through the process, and it's election day, and the surgeon wants to schedule my surgery here at Freighter Hospital at, uh, you know, early in the morning. I said, well, no, that won't do. i got to vote. <laughs> so I went, and I voted, and I got my sticker, and then we drove here to Freighter. And uh, at 1 p.m. On, on November 6th, um, Mike and I rolled into OR room side by side. And um, within just a couple of hours, it was a done deal. And uh, we are celebrating our five-year um, anniversary uh, this November. Um, but a couple of really cool things have happened since then. So, you know, a lot of the medication that... that um, folks afflicted with, with illness, you know, cause a lot of issues in the body. I mean, Mike, Mike and his wife, Angela, were told, hey, you're, you're not going to have children, okay? Well, not true. Um, well, besides my own beautiful daughters, uh, we received the hugest blessing um, in the first, I call them my kidney beans. Um, I am Auntie KK, and, and they are my little kidney beans. Uh, we welcomed um, Liam Timothy MK into the world. And, woo, sorry, this is a, <laughs> I still get emotional after all this time. That's the first time I met him in that picture. And he's, he's beautiful. He's three years old now. And just this, <laughs> you think I have energy, you should, you know, a three-year-old. Um, and then we welcomed his little brother, uh, Shaden Miles, um, just last December. So he is now 10 months old. And um, 
you know, it's weird to tell it. I tell this story all the time, and I, I don't usually get this emotional about it because I've told it so many times, but it, it, it's different when you're talking to people who know, you know, who have lived it and, and who've seen the blessings of, of, of God's work. And, and that's really what I want to promote. You know, my ideal job would be to do this without crying publicly, I might add, um, but to travel the world and talk to people about the blessing that we contain. I mean, I'm just the vessel, and, and I know that that's my purpose on this earth. That is why I started going to River Glen Church. I mean, it, it's just, it's kind of why everything happened. It, it's, it's connected. We're connected. And so... As a caregiver, I really do try to share this story and how being a donor, whether it's a living donor or, or signing that driver's license, you know, to put that sticker on, on the back to say, hey, I'm willing to give, what an impact that that makes. Um, you know, there's a story that I love and um, in my line of work in, in leadership, I welcome a lot of, of associates to, to our organization, and, and I like to give them a little insight into not only my story and my leadership style, but kind of what I expect of them. And um, that story is the starfish story, and it, re it, it relates to me very personally. Um, it, and it's a story about just this young girl who's kind of engaged in this ritual dance. She's just methodically throwing starfish into the ocean. And there's starfish as far as the eye can see on this beach. And she's approached by a man who kind of looks at her and says, why? Why are you doing this? And, and her response is, well, if I don't, they'll die. And he said, well, what difference can it possibly make? There are thousands of these on the beach. And she picks one up and throws it back into the ocean and says, well, it made a difference to this one. And that's the story of donation. Every decision to donate makes a difference, a profound difference in someone's life. And, and I love that I have been given the health and the blessing of becoming a part of the Nikloi family and um, being able to stand here and, and share my story with you. Um, so I welcome anybody to reach out to me, to talk to me about my experience. You know, I, I obviously shortened it up for the sake of conversation today, but there's a lot of fear involved in it. it it's a scary process for some people, and, and I want to be able to coach people through that and help them to get to that decision. So um, I appreciate you listening to my story. I'm, I'm sorry for the tears. Um, and I'm not a pretty crier, so those of you online are quite fortunate. Um, but thank you very much for your time and for letting me share. Thank you. So I thought Mary Kay was a perfect person uh, to start us off tonight because um, the purpose of tonight's program is to talk again about uh, donor Sabbath and how we can all promote donation because we're all uh, listening or being here tonight because we believe and have seen the power of um, organ donation, the miracle of transplantation. So. Um, I, um, I don't know if there are any questions, but again, feel free to, um, you know, uh, list those if you're listening online. But I think um, Mary Kay's story just sets the stage in terms of the importance of faith communities. I think a lot of us probably have maybe staffed a, a booth at a health fair or certainly talked individually to people, uh, volunteered at different things. But... Um, I think um, sometimes we overlook um, um, the faith community as being another natural location where we can be promoting donation or helping others like Mike who might not uh, have the courage or the ability maybe to advocate um, and tell their story, but more importantly, um, another venue for us to bring messages to. So um, Pam, um, is here tonight to share some of her work. She works intimately with all of the organizations in Wisconsin that are working together to promote donation. And we're very lucky to have Pam as one of our uh, thought leaders in terms of all of our work in Donate Life Wisconsin. And she's sharing some uh, information and some strategies on what each of us can do 
um, in our own communities. So Pam, thank you and welcome tonight. Thank you, Cindy. I'm just going to try and clip this on. I'm going to presentation will be a little bit drier. <laughs> I don't know how I follow that up. That was just like so moving and awesome. And what I really keyed in on is how many times you said what you did is a blessing. And you know, everyone in this room, it's 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 all about a blessing. So I think this is so fitting. Um, it's kind of interesting for me to. Am I blocking my own thing? Um, to kind of talk during this week. I'm Jewish. We're in the middle of our High Holy Days. Um, Rosh Hashanah was last week. Yom Kippur starts tomorrow night. So it's a, a time of reflection and renewal. And um, I, I don't go often, but this I, I am very spiritual just day to day. So this, this kind of, these 10 days are always very sort of um, meaningful for me. So I, it, I, I like that we're talking about this and that I'm here with you all and those on the phone um, during this time. So uh, thank you, Cindy, and to the National Kidney Foundation of Wisconsin for having me here and to you folks, wonderful men, John, and I didn't get a chance to meet you, but thank you for helping with the presentation and the, and the, the videos that hopefully will work, but if not, we'll make it through it. Um, and I also want to say thank you on behalf of Donate Life Wisconsin for all that Cindy and the National Kidney Foundation of Wisconsin do as a member to support not only um, patients and families, but you know the, the overall work of Donate Life Wisconsin and um, educating people about living donation and registering as an organ tissue and eye donor um, to leave a legacy. So thank you again for all you do and for having us be here. Um, tonight, uh, as Cindy said, I'll share with you how you can share your stories because we just, each one of you has a brilliant story to tell and tell it so beautifully. I keep dropping the microphone for those of you listening in, so I'm just going to hold it. How you can share your story, especially with the faith-based community, um, and during this time um, of Donor Sabbath, and I'll explain what Donor Sabbath is, why it's observed, um, what Donate Life America and Donate Life Wisconsin have underway to reach faith-based communities, and ideas and resources so you can take your stories um, to uh, your faith-based organizations and uh, or just others who are very faith-minded. So um, Cindy told me I had to include a picture of myself. <laughs> so for those of you on the phone, so that's me. Uh, I have to actually laugh because that picture is from a Donate Life Wisconsin event. It's photoshopped because we were with um, Craig Robinson, who's the former vice president of the Milwaukee Bucks. He's also Michelle Obama's brother, and he, he was volunteering with us, and Kathy Schultz, um, who's the Donate Life Wisconsin marketing chair. So I photoshopped them out for this picture. But but we do have that photo in the upcoming Donate Life America conference. So anyway, um, I have a uh, firm called Super Pair Strategies. It's a marketing communications firm. I was very fortunate to become engaged with Donate Life Wisconsin in March of 2015. Um, I assist with public relations, getting news stories, uh, social media, paid advertising. Um, the issue of donation and transplantation is very important to me. One of my closest friends who we lost in a bike accident uh, was a registered donor and was able to leave his legacy. Um, also, uh, my nephew, uh, who since passed away, um, was a recipient of bone marrow donor transplant. So, and he actually it was a very successful transplant, but life post transplant didn't go was a struggle. So, so close to me um, as well. And of course, I am a registered donor. So, um, first, Donate Life Wisconsin. A little bit about that. Um, it's a nonprofit affiliate of Donate Life America. Donate Life America is the national nonprofit organization of national partners and state teams. Uh, obviously working very hard to increase the number of donated organs, eyes, and tissues um, that's available to um, heal and save lives, and also develop a, uh, a culture of donation, um, a social norm, just like we put on our seatbelts, where being a donor is just, it's fundamental human responsibility. It's like putting on our bike helmet. Um, Donate Life Wisconsin is the state team for Donate Life America. Um, unlike a lot of the other state teams, we're a collaborative. We don't have any staff. It's um, all volunteer and members. So we have the two OPOs, um, four transplant hospitals, uh, tissue and eye organizations, 
patient advocacy organizations, including National Kidney Foundation, um, Department of Health Services, and we have members of the board who are also um, recipients, donor families, living donors. Um, so it's 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 very well rounded, and everybody, as I said, it's 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 volunteer. It's in addition to their day jobs and whatever else keeps them busy during the day. So Donor Sabbath, um, it's a national observance that's celebrated every, two, every year, uh, two weekends before Thanksgiving. This year it's Friday, November 10th uh, through Sunday, November 12th. Um, it is the time of year to bring um, the life-saving issue of donation into that season of giving. Um, you know, this is the time of year where we gather with our families, we count our blessings as we just talked about, so it's a very ideal time to promote registering as a donor. Um, since people often turn to their religious leaders for help with these types of decisions, whether, you know, life and, life and death issues, uh, healthcare issues, um, National Donor Sabbath provides an opportunity for the faith community uh, to share their views and encourage dialogue and education about um, donation and transplantation. Um, first, you know, really bottom line, it's an opportunity to educate the public about the need of donation, um, speak to the gift, uh, which you did so eloquently, um, and also educate about the importance of registering that decision and sharing that with others. So why Donor Sabbath? You know, why, why was this observance created? Well, research has shown that uh, one of the main reasons people hesitate to register as a donor is because of the misconception that it's against their religion. Um, so with your help and your stories, we can help eliminate that misconception and teach people that donation is a true act of compassion, an act of purpose, and it really is supported by just about all major U.S. religions. So the key messages that we try and share during Donor Sabbath, what I just said um, in, in repeating that often, is that all, all major U.S. religions do support donation um, as it's, you know, it's a final act of love, charity, and generosity. Um, we all know faith and hope play an important role in the whole process, um, whether it's a decision to register and throughout the transplant process. Um, obviously, for those who are waiting for transplants, who want to have their lives healed and return to their families. There's a lot of prayer involved to the registered donors, um, living donors who hope to someday make a difference, um, and to the donor families who really ha get a sense of peace knowing that their loved ones um, gave, gave of themselves. Um, all of us, really, there's, there's that shared belief in something greater than our, ourselves. So it's, it's very, you know, faith-oriented decision. And the other thing is, you know, Making a commitment to be a living donor, to be a registered donor, it says a strong statement about our beliefs, no matter what our backgrounds are. Um, and it you know, relieves the burden for families who, who don't have to make those kinds of decisions lately. So those are the key messages that, through a number of ways, we try and get across during Donor Sabbath. So Donate Like was Donate Like. Donate Life Wisconsin, let's say that three times fast, mm -hmm. um, what we're doing uh, during this time, and we've actually already started, is we have um, a paid media print campaign, advertising campaign going on that's running statewide in multicultural print publications, uh, August through October. And for the October insertion, we actually have this ad, um, which features Reverend Karen Sandberg, who is also a living donor to her friend Mike. Yes, so um, she's she's from the Green Bay Green Bay area. She's actually speaking Sunday at uh, UW Health's Living Donor Ceremony, um, and then Reverend Christopher Boston. Um, so it it features them. Uh, Christopher is the husband of Tani Boston, who is the uh, community outreach coordinator. I'm not sure if that's exact title, but for the Wisconsin Donor Network. So very. Very connected community. So we have them in uh, these print ads. They've also voiced uh, public service announcements that we're going to have running in October and November on religious radio stations throughout the state. Um, through public relations, uh, we're going to uh, pursue news coverage 
uh, stories like Jack was in a story for our uh, on Madison and Milwaukee TV. So we're going to pursue some news stories. The angle we're going to focus on is actually living donation this time and how people, um, how the church has been a connection point uh, for living donors and matches, as well as how the church just plays a role um, in, in supporting that. So we're going to hopefully uh, get some news coverage as well. Um, we'll utilize social media. Donate Life Wisconsin has a Facebook page, which we encourage you all to follow. If I recall, it's at Donate Life Wisconsin, but it's we've got a Facebook page, so you should follow it. And so we'll have social media postings, and including during that time period, we're going to show um, four videos that will feature uh, Karen and Christopher, and hopefully we have two. Will that work if we show two of them tonight? You think so? Yeah. Okay, so the first one we're going to show is um, Reverend Karen Sandberg. Karen's kind of excitable, so watch out. Okay. of her talking about her being a living donor as well. And it's as compelling as that. So then our next video is uh, Christopher Boston. videos on Facebook to other ones over the course of the weekend. Oh, I've got that echo. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, so those will be running over donor Sabbath, so follow our Facebook page for that, and we'll talk more about that uh, in a minute. Nationally, opening actually tomorrow, is a national film, um, A Question of Faith, which features a moving storyline about three families um, from different cultures. A uh, texting and driving accident thrusts them um, onto converging paths, and along with a very strong message of faith, the cast delivers a really compelling film that touches on uh, many timely topics. It deals with racial prejudice, it deals with obviously texting and driving, and it also touches on organ donation. Um, Donate Life America uh, provided input for the film's development, the script, the production. Um, the movie reportedly has been a resounding success in its screenings and uh, the cast uh, includes many uh, well-known actors and there's a website, a aquestionoffaith.com and the movie's website is very extensive. It has lots of resources including clips of the video as well as clips from religious leaders talking about the movie and the impact. So um, that opens tomorrow. It will be opening here in Wisconsin and in the area I believe at the AMC theaters. So look for uh, theater listings, but that uh, will be very helpful. Um, and as I said, that opens up tomorrow. So that's going on at the national level. So what can you do? Because like Mary Kay, each of you has a very interesting and compelling story. Um, first, as I mentioned, social media. If you have a Facebook page or Twitter or, or that kind of thing, you know, definitely follow Donate Life Wisconsin and feel free to share our content. 
Um, we post actually twice a day, try to. So we're, we're always curating other related pages uh, as well as, you know, with our Donate Life members looking for content to share. That helps educate. So feel free to, to share our, our content um, and share your own stories uh, with pictures. Pictures are always great. Um, as far as with your faith-based communities, make a list of all the people you know. Uh, that are, you know, in your faith organization or that you know are faith-minded. Friends, um, are they choir members, uh, other congregants, the health minister, your pastor if you feel comfortable, and then approach them one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, a, a personal connection always means the most. Um, if they have a church website, ask them if they would provide a link to the donor registry or Donate Life Wisconsin, which will take you to the registry. Um, and share your story. I'm a, I'm a University of Florida Gator, so to me, I was excited to find a Tim Tebow picture. He's a storyteller, so it was better than clip art. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so, and we know he's obviously a very compelling speaker. But you, each one of you, is a storyteller, and and this is what this is all about. So, ask to share your story at church, whether it's in a small group or it's at a service. Um, Talk about how faith played a role, um, whether it was in the decision-making process or somebody you met or somebody who helped you, somebody organized food delivery, carpool. Again, you know, draw that connection, how your faith and your uh, faith community helped. Um, if there's a health ministry, uh, engage them, have a separate, you know, kind of health, healthy living, healthy lifestyles kind of kind of session where you talk about medical history with such, you know, conversation starters as how many people in your family have diabetes or high blood pressure. All of these things we know are illnesses that may lead to the need for a transplant. So they're 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 great conversation starters to make it relevant because we all know at any point we can suffer an injury, whether, you know, we, we sprain a knee and we, you know, ACL, we need a tissue transplant or cancer with breast cancer or all, you know, all of the issues that, that we've, we've faced in this room. Um, you know, no, no one's immune. So uh, it, the key is really kind of making that connection between what you've gone through as well as what anybody else might go through. Um, with regards to living donation, as, as Mary Kay and Cindy talked about it, support those in your congregation who have the need. Um, be a steward, you know, share it with the message board that you know somebody needs a donor or needs help. Um, you can help spread the word and share the mission. So quite a few things you, you can do with your story and make it very personal, not in a, you know, off, you know, formal way. Um, the you know, the church newsletter or the temple newsletter asked to contribute content in the bulletin. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a list of resources. There's lots. You don't have to write something new. There's lots of content that we can provide you with. Um, you know, and as Cindy talked about, many of you have staffed information tables. Ask your faith-based organization, would they be willing to have an information table? Um, we can e even engage our OPOs, you know, UW Health or Wisconsin Donor Network and our other Donate Life Wisconsin organizations to do a registry drive. We have this cool thing called Swipe for Life where we can just basically take a picture of somebody's driver's, li driver's license, secure, and register people on the spot. So there's ways to, to, get, to get involved. Um, consider, if you haven't already, attending a volunteer training session. Um, both Wisconsin Donor Network and UW Health put those on. Um, so they can help you get educated and feel comfortable about the stuff that's sort of outside of your story. Um, but at a, at a minimum, if you go to the DonateLifeWisconsin.org um, website, we have lots of resources. Um, we have a great one-page fact sheet. There's a PowerPoint. So there's ways to get educated as well as pull that information. So, and speaking of resources, and I know, Cindy, you passed that out, and I'm happy I can, you know, email this to anybody, but um, these websites all have great materials. There's flyers, there's uh, sample sermons, hymns, scripture references, prayers, benedictions, bulletin inserts, as I mentioned, um, discussion about theological perspectives. So all of these websites have, have that kind of information. And then just for, you know, as I mentioned, general information about organ tissue and eye donation, um, donatelifewisconsin.org. So I'm done. <laughs> oh.
thank you, and if you need to reach me, <laughs> I'm happy to help. <laughs> Are there any questions, either here in the room or online? Okay. Well, thank you. Um, any questions here in the room? No? Anything online? Um, what? We're going to, we'll give just a few minutes if you want to type something. But first of all, thanks, um, Pam and Mary Kay. I think you guys were a great tag team considering you had never met before. I think um, very complimentary a story and then Pam, great information and motivation. So um, next month our program, um, we're kind of continuing this fall. Um, on um, being inspired by people that um, have some connection to donations. So next month our program, first of all, will not be on Thursday. It will, this room's not available in October on our normal Thursday. So we actually will be on October 13th, or 31st. So Halloween if that makes sense. So you may come in costume if you'd like, um, but uh, the um, uh, we've been asked many times and our office is getting a lot of calls about um, conveying to children uh, information about either donation or chronic illness that uh, many times um, recipients, grandparents, moms and dads, brothers and sisters, um, and it's been surprising to me. And so based on just the past six months and the calls our office has gotten from patients, etc., I've asked Brenda Cortez to come. She herself has written one book about her experience in terms of uh, becoming a a living donor, but she now is branched off and her second book, she'll be sharing um, uh, that with us, she's starting a series in terms of understanding different types of transplants. Um, and her um, latest book is about heart transplantation. So she'll be uh, sharing kind of that, but also I think how to take that passion of storytelling and maybe um, doing something a little bit different with it. So this month, um, you know, our theme has been look forward to the donor Sabbath. It's a good time if you're a member of a faith community or you know someone who is to maybe ask if they're doing anything. Um, and um, I think hopefully it'll be a great follow-up. Then our program in November, um, because again Thanksgiving is on our normal Thursday, our program in November will be um, maybe what I consider kind of timely and will deal with um, fraud and kind of protecting not just our personal identities, but kind of looking at fraud. It's kind of the shopping and holiday season. And so just kind of taking a pause uh, from donation, but something that's very important, but also um, hopefully can relieve some stress if we just have that and we're armed with that personal information. So we are teaming up with um, AARP in Wisconsin, which has a very vibrant free educational um, resources and a series of speakers and so they'll be joining us for that um, November program so we're very excited about that. Did you have a question Pam? You look like... It's, it's, it's time I just froze all my credit reports after Equifax. So yeah I so I, I think I think it's really uh, very timely and then um, just to let you know some other things that we're doing uh, with the Medical College of Wisconsin we're doing the first ever kind of patient uh, and dialysis staff conference uh, in October. Um, certainly any of you are welcome always to come. The event is free, but really looking at another part of our mission, which is to um, help individuals that are affected by chronic kidney disease, in this case individuals that are on dialysis, but working on um, self-management and care. So we're kind of proud of that effort. It's the first time like doctors and nurses will be sitting at the same table learning along with dialysis patients and caregivers. And then John, I don't know if there are any other slides. 
some of our other events. A big event in terms of promoting organ tissue and eye donation uh, is our Spotlight on Life event. The date is January 27th. Um, that is here in Milwaukee at the uh, Hilton. That's where transplant centers and uh, tissue organizations and the two organ procurement organizations uh, compete each other compete against each other on the dance floor, but we do live stream that, so you'll be able to see the competitions uh, live. One of our recipients here in the room with us here in Milwaukee um, was one of those competitors and uh, danced with his, the mother of his um, donor. Um, so I think that's a fun event. And then uh, the spring um, is the Parkway 5K. It's a run and walk. Um, and that, again, is, uh, is one of our fundraising events along with Spotlight because everything that we do for patients and families in the state of Wisconsin is free of charge. And so uh, that is one of our events in the greater Milwaukee area. And then our uh, big event, again, to promote organ tissue and eye donation, gathering over 1,200 recipients, living donors, and donor families together is in Madison, and that um, is in uh, July, and that's the last Saturday in July. And so it's a great place, again, to maybe reconnect. So Mary Kay, I invite invite you to come, but we have recipients, living donors, donor families from um, 18 different states uh, attend. So it's a great chance, I think, to meet other people, to share stories, because I think as both Pam and Mary Kay said, it's really drawing inspiration from each other, and I think um, it just multiplies the effect as we help to spread the word about organ tissue and eye donation. So thank you again to both of you for coming. Okay. About donor Sabbath. Okay. okay. Uh, have the religious leaders in our community receive any communication about It's a good question, and I believe through our our Donate Life Wisconsin members, there is outreach. So I know, for example, um, oh, too too close. Better. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I know, for example, uh, with Wisconsin Donor Network, they have started a. Um, Code R program, which it's church organ. I can't remember exactly what it stands for, but it's related to organ tissue and eye and registration. Um, so I know there's been a train the trainers type of program, and that's communicated through that. So a lot of the communication um, really comes from the members of Donate Life Wisconsin. Um, that goes directly to the churches, but we would definitely welcome. Um, you know, again, I mean, that's part of the reason we're here tonight is to get more people to, it's, it's a lot more meaningful when it comes from within the own church and it's somebody they know, so. Yeah, and I think I'll just add um, to Pam's comment. I think an organization like ours, we're a statewide organization, but it would be, um, we would have no, no way, I think, to just uh, execute that kind of thing, and so I think my experience tells me, and I'll look at Mary Kay when I say this, that really it's the personal uh, connection because a letter that just gets mailed to a church or a synagogue or other um, type of uh, mosque um, might just fall on a secretary's desk and never even in itself get to a faith leader. And so um, my experience uh, at the National Kidney Foundation is that many times some of that communication let's say just from an organization uh, might never get to the right person and so I think um, the purpose of tonight's program at least my underlying purpose was to um, in my again my experience tells me that when someone within an organization and I think that's the same in a work site uh, a school a um, etc. When someone asks someone else um, about it and how to promote something within an organization, it makes, and they say why, and you say, well, because, uh, it, it makes a little bit more of a difference than something that might land on just one person's desk and uh, might just sit there. But thank you for the question very much. Any other questions, either in the room or from our online folks? 
Well, I, I don't want to delay anyone from getting ready to um, get your nacho dip ready for the game in, a, in an hour. Uh, but I do want to acknowledge um, um, to um, our volunteers, John Hacker and Merle Steel, Steelman, who are in the room with us, but both themselves are transplant recipients. And um, I think to Pam's point about um, finding a passion volunteering. Um, John and Merle um, are just committed to increasing accessibility of all of our programs. And so um, I couldn't do this without them and their backup. And um, I, I just um, I just want to say how much I appreciate your volunteer efforts. So it's I think it's pretty neat and amazing that we're able to offer this opportunity. So uh, thank you all for joining us, those of you online. Um, and thank you for those of you that are here in the room. And go Pack!